I was driving to work this morning, I was listening to another radio station, as we broadcasters sometimes do. What I heard shocked and saddened me. The Entertainment Roundtable. They're here, nerds. Wait, is this the group that goes around mutilating squirrels? You just mind your P's and Q's, buster, and remember who you're dealing with. Well, at least we found them. Fortuitous, Captain. And now that we have them all together, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. <laughs> the Entertainment Roundtable. They make one person go, blah, 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 and the other person go, what are you talking about? And then one person goes, blah, 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 blah. And welcome to another edition of the Entertainment Roundtable. I'm Jeff Meyer. Steve West had to step out just for a moment. We were having a little technical issue, but now, stepping back in, to his normal slot. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Steve West, the Magnificent. Hey, what's happening? Go. Oh, hopefully everything is going well for you on this weekend. Been busy, busy, busy here. As you guys know, for uh, the most part, we record on Fridays, and it's been a busy news day here on this Friday. So we've been kind of struggling trying to get everything done all at the same time, but that gives us a chance to kind of separate now and check out some movies and television news here. And uh, of the uh, group that we normally have, two are missing car problems for David. So he's taking care of that, and the Irwin brothers have Josh just running back and forth as they get prepared to film their next movie. So they're already starting to work on their next film. Mom's Night Out has only been out on DVD since Tuesday. Right. So that's how quick in filmmaking it turns over. So that gives us Jeff, who you introduced yourself. Hi. I'm Steve West. I just introduced myself. we got Ryan on the phone from Maryland. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing more phenomenal, Steve. Thanks for having me. I like to hear it. And Jacob on the phone as well. How are you, sir? Glad to be here. Glad to hear it. Now, things may change sound-wise here because, again, changing studios around may be one of the deals that we'll do right in the middle of the show. We'll keep you updated on that. But first things first, let's go ahead and plow through first segment, and we'll see where the second segment goes. Uh, talking about the top ten movies of last week, in at number ten, you had The Expendables Part 3 barely hanging on to the top ten there, 4.5 million, 34.2. 100-foot journey still, and it's been there ever since it debuted in the lower half of the top 10, but it's been consistently making money, five, six million dollars a week, 41.3 million for them. Giver takes in another seven million dollars over the three-day Labor Day holiday weekend, 33.2 there. When the game stands tall, making 8.2 million dollars in at number seven, so 18.8 .8 for that in two weeks. And then you get the top six all making at least 10 million dollars. November Man debuts, now over the weekend, it made 10.1 million dollars, overall 11.8. Had the chance to go see the November Man last week it, and reviewed it right here on the show. It was a little underwhelming. But for a Pierce Brosnan film, I don't know whether to call this underwhelming or just what I, what everyone would have expected from this film. Hmm. I don't know. Any thoughts on that, Ryan? I have yet to see it, so I can't comment nor speculate. I don't, I don't know what the reviewers are, call, uh, are talking about when it comes to this. I haven't seen any Rotten Tomatoes or anything like that. But, again, it, it doesn't really surprise me after having watched the film that this uh, didn't really even crack the top five. Speaking of cracking the top five, as above, so below, $10.3 million. Ryan, you saw it last week. You liked it. Yes, I did. It was one of the more scarier films I've seen in recent years. So a good scare fest, and it'll stick around for a little while, probably. Uh, up to number four, the comedy Let's Be Cops still raking in cash, 10.4 million, 59.5. If I Stay, 11.8 million, 32.3 there. And then our uh, top two movies continue to be the top two that they've been now for over a month. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, another 15.6 million, 166.3 million there. And Guardians of the Galaxy, 22.9 million over the weekend. So it wrapped up on Tuesday at 281.2. And that officially makes it the top grossing film of the year, even beating out the better known character in Captain America and the second film in that series, The Winter Soldier. So Guardians of the Galaxy, the one that you knew was going to do well, and Jacob is very happy that it's doing well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 281.2. And a lot of people are saying they're going to think this is going to top out at about 300 million. I don't see anything coming out here fairly in the next couple of weeks that's really going to challenge this for number one. Yeah, August is usually what when they sort of dump the horror movies and yeah. maybe the early award contenders or just the stuff they didn't think would fly in summer. So, exactly. Yeah. Jacob? Uh, I mean, I, you, 
we are starting to run into the if you haven't seen it by now, you know, like how many people haven't seen this? Yeah, now we're getting into the multiple multiple watches. Right. Yeah, and so I think it's going. I, I don't think it's going to make much more than three hundred, but I think it will hit three hundred easily. Ryan. Yeah, I agree it will hit $300 million, but let's not forget there's a little film coming out in November called Mockingjay Part 1 that's going to destroy it. Yeah, but uh, I don't think Guardians is going to be in the theaters until November. So, you know, I'm just thinking within the next month, I mean, we're into early September. I think through the end of the month, it's probably fairly safe. You might see something to come up and knock it out of the number one slot, but I don't see anything that's going to really just destroy it until we get past September. Right, agreed. Okay. Speaking of what's coming out this weekend, um, yeah, not much. Uh, the only original film and wide release coming out is a film called The Identical. stars Ray Liotta, Ashley Judd, Seth Green, Blake Rain. It's a movie about two brothers separated at birth. One becomes a famed rocker while the other struggles to balance his love of music with attempting to please his father. A uh, slight faith base undertone to this from what I'm being told um, doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be a major blockbuster movie. Uh, I haven't seen any reviews on it early either, so but that's it's got the weekend to itself when it comes to brand new releases. That said, you've got a re-release of a film that is beloved from 20 years ago. Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks, Robin Wright, Gary Sinise re-release of the multi-Oscar winning drama about the not-so-intelligent man and his life experiences which intersect with the many famous moments in the past. And of course his love of Jenna. This is, by the way, out in IMAX only for a limited time. That's the reason they're putting this thing back out 20 years after the fact. They're putting it out on IMAX screens just to make it that much bigger. This is going to make some money. People remember it. They're going to take their kids to it, kind of like Star Wars when they came out with the special editions uh, as they were leading up to putting out uh, Episode One. Uh, this is going to get the parents that are going to take their kids to it, but I don't see it sticking around for very long. I think it's only planned for like a one- or two-week release, isn't it, Ryan? Yes, it is. Okay, so rush out and see it quick if you're going to go see it, but it's not got staying power, obviously, and the identical I just don't think is going to be any challenge to the Guardians of the Galaxy at all. Oh, no, not even close. So there you have that. So Guardians probably going to be your number one film in the next week. Hmm. I can dig it. You can dig it? I'm sure Jacob can. I can dig it. <laughs> uh, that brings us up to out in limited release. If you want to check them out, you need to check your local listings. You want to ensure that it is being played somewhere near you. Films called God Help the Girl, Kelly and Cal. There's a movie that's actually got some names with it. It's Ed Harris, Ava Longoria, and others. It's a movie called Frontera. This is a movie that I'm kind of led to believe is going to start off a limited release and then start to go a little bit wider. Uh, I would think especially if it can get any kind of traction like 100 Foot Journey has, but I haven't heard any long-term plans for it. Uh, two other films coming out in limited release called The Remaining and Wetlands. So those are the films that you have to choose from this week. And if you are really, really anticipating something better coming out the next week, I can't really help you. <laughs> no promises. Uh, there is the Idris Elba film, No Good Deed, which does look interesting only because of the fact that I like Idris Elba. I have yet to see him in a role that I have not liked him in. Even if he played a bad guy, he still ate up the scenery and did a great job with it. Um, but otherwise, I don't know where to go with this. This is where he's, I think, taking a, takes a woman hostage in her own home. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've heard people say that this is pretty much nothing. It, it breaks no new ground here, but... I might actually go check it out just because it is Idris Elba and I like him a lot. Uh, the film Dolphin Tale 2, and if you're familiar with Dolphin Tale 1, here you go again, and the film called The Drop, I don't know anything about it. Oh. Can I say that if you're familiar with Dolphin Tale, if Dolphin Tale 1, you probably shouldn't be listening to this show. <laughs> <laughs> actually, The Drop, I do believe, would be uh, one of Gandolfini's last movies. Uh, it will be one of them, yes. Uh, what, Gandolfini? Yeah, because that's the um, one dealing with the bar that is the front for gambling money for the mob. Yes, and these yeah. guys come in and rob it. It actually yep. looks pretty good. I've watched the trailer. It looks sort of interesting. So. Yep, and I haven't heard much about it other than that, but uh, it does kind of interest me. But again, I'm looking at these two. I don't see anything that's really going to jump up and, right. and challenge much when it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy, which continues the conversation of how long can Guardians go sitting at the number one slot, which it appears right now for a while. We'll see. Maybe the, tur the Turtles will keep sort of hurtling each other back and forth. I don't know. Turtles seems to be losing ground faster than what Guardians of the Galaxy is, though. Gotcha. Yeah. 
I mean, if you think about it, and granted, it was a three-day weekend, but Guardians of the Galaxy didn't even drop out of the $20 million range, whereas we were watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it had already fallen out of the $20 million range, and it's now in the mid-teens. Yeah, I, I just don't see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles jumping back up into the number one slot. Although it would be interesting if they did. People like that raccoon, man. What can you say? I, hey, I got no problem with it. And if I had nothing better to do, I, know, right? I might actually go check it out again. I did like the movie that much. You, by the way, can check us out online, uh, facebook.com slash the entertainment roundtable. Feel free, go over there, check out what we've got posted up there. And a lot of the stuff, if you're looking for a little bit more detail, sometimes uh, you can find that through the stories that we link to. Jacob, Ryan, Jeff, myself, Josh, David, we're all on there. We can all post stuff that's on there, just having a good time out there. So keep that in mind that you can go to the uh, entertainment roundtable on Facebook and have a good time. I've been told that we are having a slight problem with uh, Ryan when it comes to the phone. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to take our break a little bit early, give us a chance to talk a little bit about movies. We're going to change studios again. So Jacob, be aware of that. And uh, we're going to see if we can't get this thing up on the right track here as we continue on with the Entertainment Roundtable. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about superhero films right off the bat, but we got a detective movie and Al Pacino playing a washed up actor. Well, it's certainly not typecasting. We'll talk more about it next. Hope you got your popcorn, because we're back to the Entertainment Roundtable on Superstation 101. Hey, back to the old familiar surroundings here. <laughs> Hopefully everything <laughs> sounds a little bit back to normal. We're uh, rushing around all over the place here. Missing my musical cues there. Yes, a bit, exactly. Buddy. And of course, we always come back with a song from a movie coming out that week or something that's in theaters right now. Well, if you happen to have seen Forrest Gump, you know the song Against the Wind by Bob Seger is on the soundtrack to the movie Forrest Gump. And by the way, fantastic soundtrack. It is really good. Well, it's a double, it's at least two disc one. Yeah, it was a two disc one. So yeah, fantastic soundtrack. So there you go. All right. So we got everybody back. We got Ryan on the phone. Yes, sir. I'm we here. got Jacob on the phone. Oh, I'm here. Hey, what do you know? And we actually sound, well, at least more normal to me when it comes to the headphones. I don't know about everybody else. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jacob, let's start with you here when we get into movie news. And this time around, wasting no time to get into the superhero portion of the show. Iron Man 3, Ben Kingsley comes in and we see Mandarin. And Ben Kingsley has actually been talking about thinking he might play that character again. Yeah, and I'm going to try to do this without spoilers, but if you haven't seen Iron Man 3 and the one shot all hell the king, uh, shame on you. <laughs> um, but he believes that there is a potential that he could reprise the role of the Mandarin uh, in future. I mean, it's that's his belief. It hasn't been confirmed, and Marvel hasn't said anything. But he's definitely interested in, in, in pretty much trying to talk himself into that role again. Well, let's face it, Marvel tends to keep things close to the vest anyway, so the chances of them saying anything uh, this far out from you know anything past Avengers, which they're not even really talking much about Avengers, is pretty slim. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a low chance that we see anything about him being a part of that universe again for a while. Okay, well, thinking about this real quick, and uh, again, I've heard rumor that they're talking with Robert Downey Jr. about an Iron Man 4. We know that there's Robert Downey Jr. is going to reprise the role of Iron Man at least one more time because he is signed on for at least three Avengers films, right? I believe so. Okay, and again, rumor is he may make an Iron Man 4. Thinking about that and thinking about the character that we saw, and I'm going to go around the table, I'm going to start with you, Jeff. Thinking about Ben Kingsley playing that role, Mandarin. Yes. Willing to have him back? Absolutely. Ryan? Sure, why not? He was comedic enough in the third, why not the fourth? And Jacob? Uh, especially if they play it the way that Ben Kingsley believes that they play it, uh, I think that would be a very cool twist. Very good. All right. Ryan, over to you. And we talked, this wasn't last week, I think it was two, maybe three weeks ago, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, obviously, possibly getting into the superhero role, trying to choose between a couple of different characters out there, and word is he settled on one. Yes, he has. In the Shazam movie, he's going to take on the role of Black Adam, who has the powers that are similar to, the, to Shazam, including strength, agility, lightning manipulation, as well as magic. No release date, no director has been set as of yet for the upcoming Shazam movie. Shazam DC? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, he's been rumored 
about doing something Marvel, does that now nix the, any possibility of him doing anything with the Marvel Universe? Pretty much. No, he hasn't been rumored to do anything Marvel. I had heard something at one point in time, but... He had been rumored to play Captain Marvel, or uh, Captain Marvel is a is another name for Shazam. They're uh, interchangeable. Same character. Okay. So, Except for Marvel's Captain Marvel, which is a woman. <laughs> well, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who was also Miss Marvel, and then now she's Captain Marvel. So yeah. I can sort of understand the confusion. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay, uh, let's see here. Moving away from superheroes. Actually, a very short superhero section of the show this what? week. Weird, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, no kidding. Jacob, Ryan Gosling, Russell Crowe, a detective film, and something of a thriller. What do you know about this movie? Well, uh, we were talking about Iron Man earlier, so Shane, ba- uh, Shane Black's directed uh, The Nice Guys has gotten a June seventeenth, two 2016 release. Uh, it's going to star, uh, like you said, Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. Uh, it's going to be set in the 1970s where a uh, private eye played by Ryan Gosling and his uh, and a leg bre- hired leg breaker Russell Crowe worked together to solve the uh, sell, excuse me solve the case of a missing girl and the seemingly unrelated death of a porn star, and their investigations are going to uncover a much bigger conspiracy. 2016 film. Yes. And what's it entitled again? Uh, the Nice Guys. The Nice Guys. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll see more of that here as we go on. Ryan, uh, latest plan for Al Pacino on the big screen, and I wouldn't call him washed up in real life. I don't think so anyway. You may have a differing opinion on what he's done here recently and maybe think he's washed up, but he's certainly going to be playing a washed up uh, person in uh, a new film coming out. What are the plans here? Uh, yes, sir. Al Pacino is going to star in a dramedy known as The Humbling. He's going to take on the role of Simon Axler, a stage legend whose career highlights are long behind him. He struggles to land his next gig, and he starts dating his friend's much younger daughter, played by uh, Greta Gerwig. And it also stars Charles Grodin, Diane Weiss, Kira Cedric, Mandy Patinkin. It's based on the 09 novel by Philip Roth of the same name. No release date as of yet for The, hum- for the Humbling. Have they started filming on this yet? Yeah, I mean, I think the filming's pretty much done. They're just waiting for the right time to release it. For a cast like that, you would have thought we would have heard about this film long before now. No, the first I heard of it was when the trailer hit the web just a few days ago. You've seen the trailer? What did you think? I I mean, granted, I've seen somewhat kind of stories like this before, so it's nothing really new. It doesn't. I don't think it's going to break necessarily some new ground, but at the same time... It's an all-star cast, and Pacino taking on a role of that, uh, you know, kind of magnitude. I'm down to watch it. Yeah, Jacob, interest? Uh, any interest for you whatsoever in this film? I mean, I'll probably watch it. It's not not anything that I'm just dying to see, but it it looks moderately interesting. So it moves the needle, but not like say Guardians of the Galaxy did. No, of course not. No. Gotcha. All right, very interesting. Uh, Jacob, last time we saw Hansel and Gretel on the big screen, they were witch hunting, but now we got another workup of the uh, children lost in the woods tale. What's the story here? Uh, well, Neil Gaiman is working on a, a, a graphic novel that is going to be coming out very soon based on Hansel and Gretel. It's going to be basically more along the lines of the, the actual children's tale, but very dark. Uh, and it seems that uh, they have... Um, they are trying to get the this created into a movie, so it should be coming soon. Uh, has I don't think it's been picked up by any studios yet, but um, um, but hopefully we will um, see something soon. Uh, Neil Gaiman doing Hansel and Gretel it would be very interesting. Well, Neil Gaiman doing Hansel and Gretel, you got to figure this thing's going to have a really dark attitude towards it. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's got to be dark. Okay, so Gaiman goes on. He takes Hansel and Gretel, puts it in a graphic novel. They're going to turn around and put it into a film. Right, and that's what's mm-hmm. interesting about this to me. They're they're moving it to a film before it's even been released as a as it's, it's the book is not out. I mean, it didn't come out till this fall. Ice quality, you know. I mean, it's going to be quality. <laughs> you know, it, it, the interesting side of this to me would be if David were actually here, because David seems to me as a guy who's not all that certain that he's a fan of Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Well, well that, he David seems is certain that he's a fan of anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I lax what I lax most of the time. <laughs> So, okay, so you're looking forward to this. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And Jacob? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I like Neil Gaiman stuff, so All right. however you pronounce his last name. Right. Ryan, uh, we mentioned the fact uh, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you went and saw that film, Jeremy Renner, right? 
It was Jeremy Renner and Gemma Arterton, and I actually enjoyed it, and they said that they're trying to make a sequel to the Witch Hunters film. Okay, so when it comes to looking at Neil Gaiman taking on the role and being a little bit more faithful to the uh, story that we know so well, does this do anything for you? Not really. I mean, if they come out with a sequel to Witch Hunters, the one with Jeremy Renner and Gemma Arterton, then I'm down, because honestly, I know I'm in the minority, but I actually enjoyed that film. I have to admit, I still have yet to see it. I've seen it, uh, and I hated it. So. See, I'm in the minority. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was just, you know, it was clever. You're kind of like me with November Man. It was sort of, you know. It was yeah. just there. It had moments. Okay. At some point in time, I'll check it out. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, Ryan, let's stick with you here. Speaking of trailers, how about one for Horrible Bosses 2? Just came out recently. What did you think? I thought it looked pretty <laughs> pretty uh, darn good and funny. The problem I had with the trailer was that they revealed a major spoiler during the course of that trailer, so I'm really kind of bummed that they did that. But I'm still going to go see it hand over fist, no, no matter what. All right. Uh, Jacob, have you seen the trailer? I haven't actually watched the trailer yet, but I loved the first movie, so yeah, definitely inter- interested. All right. Jeff? Uh, I have not watched the trailer yet. Actually, I haven't completed the first movie either. I think I've watched the first hour. See, I haven't even gotten that far. At some point in time, I do need to watch Horrible Bosses, and I need to watch the uncut, not the TNT or USA version. I know. It's one of the weird things. I I liked what I saw. I had to stop it for something. I mean, I sort of had to stop it for something going on and just never... Never went back and picked it back up. Uh, This Watching this trailer, it actually kind of seems kind of funny. And, you know, they bring in Chris Pine which is, you know, a little unexpected for me. And some of the names of the quote-unquote bosses are obviously Jennifer Aniston's back there. She's reprising a role, but they've got uh, the guy who plays Chris Pine's father. name just went right out of my head. Christoph Waltz. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it just looks, it looks pretty funny. Now, again, this is going to be one of those films, kind of like what we've been talking about in the Hangover series of things, where it's going to be that raunchy comedy. And we'll let you know right now, if you do watch the trailer that we are talking about, you are going to get some words. So make sure you know exactly who's in the room when you watch this, because, yeah, you're going to hear some stuff. Jacob, uh, to you and a movie set in China. It's called Skip Trace, apparently the latest Jackie Chan film, and he's got somebody that is recognizable to co-star. Uh, yeah, it's called Skip Trace. It's about a Hong Kong detective who teams up with a mouthy American gambler to save his niece uh, and take down the city's most notorious criminal. It was originally going to be paired with Sean William Scott, but he had to exit the role. So they have now gotten uh, the, I guess, apparently the only other person that is close enough to Sean William Scott, and apparently because they ca- keep casting him in the, these similar roles, is Johnny Knoxville. So, Do we go from the frying pan into the fire on that? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't have high expectations for Skip Trace. Uh, no. Or when do they want to try and get this thing out? Next year? Uh, oh, is it in this story? I don't have a date on it. Uh, Jackie Chan tends to move fairly quickly when it comes to things like this. He's not one to really play around. He tries to get films produced as quickly as he can and get them out into the theaters. I would think sometime next year. I couldn't give you a date, obviously, but I would think sometime next year would be his plan. So, all right. Uh, We were talking names before, and Jeff, I want to talk about a movie called The Martian, which apparently is being uh, directed by Ridley Scott. It's got Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain. What do we know about this film? This is like World of Worlds kind of thing? You just kind of filled in everything I knew about it. The the director and the people who are... Now, apparently it's based on an an e-book by um, Andy, uh, an author named Andy Weir. It's about an astronaut who gets stranded on Mars and must figure out how to stay alive long enough to get back home. Ah, okay. So it's not a War of the Worlds thing, then. No, it's it's space stuff. Space, the final frontier. With Ridley Scott, though, which is good. And, you know, Matt Damon. I like me some Jessica Chastain. I'm mm-hmm. assuming that it's Chastain who's the astronaut because I don't want to be sexist. <laughs> no, Matt Damon. If I, Darn if it! I'm mis- if I'm not mistaken, Matt Damon it will play the astronaut because it's the, 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 the lead in that book is a male. See, you didn't want to be sexist, but Jacob, he's got no problem going right down that road. Yeah. I guess apparently neither does Andy Weir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so this is a film that, uh, do they have an idea when they want to try and get this thing out? Uh, no, they, they don't have all the deals locked in yet, So, but apparently, oh, okay. apparently if, if they get... Uh, Damon Chastain locked in, Scott locked. 
once they once they do that, they'll get the green light and, and get going. Ridley Scott, though, and this is just my own personal thoughts, uh, just because of of what I've experienced in some of the films that Ridley Scott is. He's very, very. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Visual. Well, no, he he's deliberate when it comes to doing his directing gigs, and I can't guarantee that this would be a film that would come out by the end of 2015. I would start to think just based upon the idea, the side, the, the effects that they're going to have to put in there, and Ridley Scott's tendency to try and be not necessarily in a Stanley Kubrick area, but kind of a perfectionist, I'm thinking Target 2016? Either that or 2017 with all the special effects he's going to be using. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if it's out Christmas next year. That seems to me, I mean, it wouldn't totally surprise me, but it seems to me that it might be a little quick. Just again, based upon the uh, reputation Ridley Scott has. I don't know. Tell. Well, at least it'll come out sooner than Prometheus 2. Well, I will say this. I, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of buzz around this book. It's actually one that's on my radar, something I'd like to read. Oh, okay. And uh, from what I hear, uh, from what I know about the plot, this is easily going to make a good movie. Well, let's hope so. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> movies being made into TV shows, TV shows being made into movies, and yep, it seems to be that TV shows being made into movies now is the bigger one, and what is old is new again. TV shows, apparently nothing's off limits, Jacob. They're going to the 1970s, early 1980s TV show about the motorcycle cops in Chips. Seriously. Yeah, uh, they've hired uh, Dax Shepard to write, direct, and co-star in a Chips movie. He's going to play the Wilcox role uh, with Michael Pena set to play Eric Estrada's character. I could see Michael um, Pena and Ponch. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, they're saying, though, it's going to be, a, it's, it's not going to be like the original series. It's going to be more action-packed uh, along the lines of Lethal Weapon or Bad Boys. So <sighs> that is disappointing. I want Impala's flipping in slow motion. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and and here's the other side of it. If you remember this as a kid, like I do, I remember watching the show when I was a kid, and I look back on it now, and good grief, it's cheesy as all get out. But back when I was a kid, the family could watch this. Yeah. I get the feeling this is going to be kind of like the A Team redone, and Mr. T going, you know what? I cannot put my. Uh, my uh, support behind this film because I've seen it and it's not for families. Uh, with Dax Shepard writing, I wouldn't think this is necessarily going to be aimed at the family crowd. Oh, no, no, no. This is going to be more in the lines of like a 22 Jump Street or 21 Jump Street where it's, it's, it's more for adults. And I love Dax Shepard, but yeah, it's not going to be like... Y'all got plenty of stuff for your families. Let us grown-ups have some fun. <laughs> All right, you want something for families? I've got something for families. Saw a very well done animated feature on How to Train Your Dragon 2, Jacob. We knew a third was going to be coming out, but now there's a little bit of trouble on that? Uh, yeah, it seems like they've shifted it back, and they haven't said why, but they're moving it back to... Um, they're moving it back to... Um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, to June 9th to 2017. Why the and, delay? Uh, which will actually go up against the aforementioned the nice guys, right? Um, so, why the delay? Have they said? They haven't said. We don't know why, but uh, probably some technical thing. What was the initial release date for it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't have it in this story. So. Okay, so chances are we're somewhere mid to late 2016. Yeah, somewhere in there. 20, uh, 2015, I mean, it's oh, it next... Set, excuse me, it was originally set for June 2016. Okay. Now, next year is supposed to be the year. I mean, we, we have been saying we're looking forward to it because we got, you know, Avengers Age of Ultron coming out. We've got the, the Star... Uh, uh, Star Wars. We do have Star Wars actually coming out then. We've got Batman versus Superman. We've got The Last and The Hunger Games. Uh, I mean, next year is shaping up to be a really, really big year. I can't think of anything right offhand in 2016 that would scare them, so it almost has to be a technical issue. Yeah, I would imagine it, there's something technical there. Maybe a, a, a deal that they can't get to lock in. Hmm. All right, well, I'm looking forward to it, because I enjoyed both the first, first two films. I thought they were both great. In fact, and I don't say this about many films, slightly, but I thought the second one was better than the first. I have not seen these films yet. 
it's worth a checkout for you because I think they're both very, very well done and the and the the animation's fantastic. So I think it's worth checking out, Ryan. Hmm. All right, all right. Okay, uh, we need to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you can bring home on DVD next Tuesday. And if you're looking movie-wise, it ain't much, but it's a big name. There's a whole lot of TV stuff here because we're still ramping up to the brand new television season for 2014-2015. And then we will start to get into some news and to what we expect out of the 2014-2015 season. All of that still yet to come. You're listening to the Entertainment Roundtable here, Superstation 101 WIDE. Hope you got your popcorn, because we're back to the Entertainment Roundtable on Superstation 101. Hey, welcome back in. Listening to the Entertainment Roundtable here, Superstation 101, WIDE. Coming back to the theme song to the TV show Community, NBC no longer showing this show. But there are plans, of course, for a season six. We'll talk about it a little bit later on here. You'll be able to find it on your computer. Uh, First things first here. What can you go to the store next Tuesday and buy if you choose to? There's only one movie. It's the standard version of Captain America the Winter Soldier. We had the high def version that came out on DVD a couple of weeks ago. Now all different formats are available to you on Captain America the Winter Soldier as of Tuesday. I think the HD version was just downloadable. Is that what it was? Netflix and Amazon and okay. Sony. Well, it was available two weeks ago, and now the DVD is out. Right. So yeah, ready to wait. go. Uh, if you are interested in some TV, you got actually a pretty good amount to choose from. There's season four of Blue Blood, season three of Homeland, season nine of Supernatural, season five of The Vampire Diaries. And this is where we're going to pick up when it comes to TV news. ABC's season one of Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is available to you. That's where I want to start here. Jacob, they obviously have plans to bridge the gap. We talked about this earlier between the first half and the second half of the season four there. They're going to take that mid-season break that's become uh, the thing to do, apparently, in TV nowadays. But they're going to stick with the the idea of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as we know them. They're going to do that short series about Agent Carter, and apparently they're adding to the casts. Do we know who it is and what they've been in? Uh, yeah, they are uh, casting uh, Anver Goat Jokaj from, Doll Ca- from Dollhouse and Chad Michael Murray from One Tree Hill. Uh, Jokaj will play uh, Angel- uh, Agent Daniel Sousa. Uh, the a war hero's risk his life many times, resulting in a once crippling, uh, uh, once resulting once in a crippling leg injury. And Chad Michael Murray will play uh, SSR Agent Jack Thompson, which we don't know much about his character. Okay, so we're going to get fleshed out the beginnings of what we now know as S.H.I.E.L.D. Correct. All right. I'm looking forward to that. I wonder if we're going to get any of the names that we knew from the movie, which we saw the beginnings of S.H.I.E.L.D., obviously, in Captain America. Maybe possibly get some of the, I don't know, some of the stars from that to kind of come and reprise their roles, even if it's just like a quick screenshot? Yeah, I I think I've heard, and I may be mistaken on this, but I thought I'd heard that we're at least going to get um, the guy who played uh, Tony Stark's father. Yeah, if you can't, you need to have Howard Stark in there, a little dumb dumb yeah. Dugan, the other sure. like commandos, if they're, if yeah. they're available. I think it'd be great. Uh, let's stick with ABC and go over to Ryan. Last week talked about the uh, possible reboot of the show Full House. One of the actors that wasn't initially mentioned specifically by name was John Stamos. He looks to be rather busy here. Is this going to be too busy? Kind of detail what he's going over, and then your opinion. Too busy to get into the Full House reunion full blast? Well, we'll see. John Stamos has got an ABC midseason drama series he's going to be starring in called Members Only, and then he's got a comedy series from Dan uh, Fogelman, who worked on the ABC comedy series known as The Neighbors, where he plays a somewhat of... You know, version of himself, a guy who, you know, used to be a womanizer, finds out he has a son that's all grown up, but is nothing like him. And those are all supposed to hit ABC within the coming uh, months, like I said, during uh, midseason and all that stuff. As far as Full House is concerned, I don't think his shows are going to last very long because ABC and, like most networks nowadays, have a very quick trigger finger on certain shows, whether it's drama or comedy. So I think Samus would still have plenty of time to do the rebooted series of Full House. All right. We are used to reboots in the movies, TV shows, not out of the realm. Again, talked about Full House there, and now we got word, Jacob, that Fox is attending to pull out a superhero of their own, and maybe according to at least what the show title said at the time, the greatest one ever? Uh, Yeah, they're looking at doing a reboot of The Greatest American Hero. Uh, It's already been uh, given a uh, a put pilot. Um, And uh, it's going to be kind of 
produced by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who both directed uh, the 21 Jump Street movie. Um, so, Wow, they're going to have to tone down some language to put it in the TV show. Yeah, yeah, definitely won't be to have the language, but it'll it, it will probably be a lot more risque than the uh, '80s uh, TV show that some people oh, remember. Yeah, I'm sure of that. Here's my question: because William Cat obviously played in that role, as far as I know, he's still alive. One would hope that they'd find a way at least to put him on the screen for a short period of time, if not give him some sort of a role that might oh, have him handing it down or something. Yeah, it would be great if he had some some, some form of cameo. I just think that's the, one of the greatest concepts ever. Dude gets a, a super suit from an alien race and loses the instructions. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. And the original show was actually kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, was. it was, you know, obviously it was geared towards family. You wanted to be able to get the parents to be able to watch something with the kids. So it wasn't like highbrow and, you know, extremely intelligent stuff. But it was kind of fun. Right. And had one of the greatest theme songs of all time. I, I know, that's right? That's true, too. I actually could have played that instead of the theme Who song of the community. Be, Steve? Yeah, well. Hey, what could have been? Believe it or not, it's just me. But I am walking on air. (laughs) Speaking of Fox and a hero, Ryan, there's word that one of our favorites, 24, could be back. And we keep wondering about a potential season, as it would turn out to be, nine. But now all of a sudden we're starting to hear that the talk of making a movie out of this could still be in the realm of possibility. Which one are you hearing might be more likely? Well, TV Line is saying a big screen adaptation of 24 is being looked at again. There could be some hiccups of 20th Century Fox's TV cousin decides it wants to keep Bauer on the small screen with the, with the great success and the great response it has with 24 Live Another Day. So we're not sure if we're going to get another miniseries with Jack Bauer or if he's going to be on the big screen. Either way, I'll take whatever they give us. In a lot of ways, and this is being purely selfish on my part, I want to be able to spread it out over a longer period of time, so I'm hoping it's the, another uh, show, miniseries or not. But, yeah, I'm like you. I'll take it pretty much any way I can get it. We said this, and I don't know whether you know this right offhand, and if you don't, no big deal, because this is something that we really hadn't planned on beforehand. But have we heard of the plan of when they want to try and get the DVD out for the season that we just wrapped up? Yes. As a matter of fact, it's going to be uh, hitting Blu-ray and DVD on September the 23rd, I believe. Ah, so later on this month. Fantastic. Yes, coming very, very soon. I can't wait to get my Blu-ray collection and add to it. Uh, you know it. Uh, NBC continues to be looking a little on the dark side here. We've seen Hannibal, Dracula, which wasn't quite as successful, Jeff, but they're not going to stop there. They're thinking about making a show about exorcism? Correct. And there's even one beyond Constantine, which deals with you know a paranormal investigator. This is called uh, The Possession of Maggie Gill. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, They've handed out a script commitment, which I guess means Rice Script will do something with it. Okay. Whatever, Hollywood, I don't know. Apparently, this the story centers on the Gills, which is a middle-class family in Eugene, Oregon, who find themselves in the middle of a crisis when weird things start to affect the everyday fabric of their lives. At the same time, there are a couple of detectives investigating brutal murders in the area, and slowly the stories converge when they, they start to believe that maybe little young Maggie Gill the 15-year-old daughter of the Gill family, might be responsible because demons. Demons! Demons! All right. <laughs> uh, Hannibal, I've seen some episodes of. It doesn't... I know I that you love that it. That show so bad. It just hasn't caught me. Dracula, I had no interest in at all whatsoever. I don't know about this. I, eh. I'm really we already got to... constant right. after. Yeah. We don't need any more. NBC seems to be really, really going dark here recently when well, it comes to some of these shows. According to the story, exorcism dramas are the, the new, I don't know, you know. They're the new vampire Ensemble thing? sitcom. Yeah, because you got Robert Kirkman's uh, working on getting a, a comic adapt, uh, Outcast. Um, Lynn Mazar is doing Damien, the follow-up to The Omen. So, he, you know, it's going on a lifetime. So it seems Constantine is the guy who. So we went from vampires to zombies, and now apparently it's exorcisms. It looks that way. Good grief. What? Uh, I don't want to. I'm not even asking that question. Forget it. I'm going to jinx it. I know. Uh, so, with that said, let's go over to Jacob with the uh, news from the CW, working obviously closely with Greg Berlanti on the show Arrow. They like him a lot. Uh, unfortunately, tomorrow people didn't do quite so well, but they've come back to him. He's doing the new series, The Flash. And now they're working up another DC Comics property. What are they going with this time, Jacob? Well, first of all, we don't know that this is going to the CW. There's, it's rumors one would assume that where to land. Yeah, one uh, would assume so because of how closely they work together. Right, they've done a lot of stuff together. 
but it looks like their uh, work, Greg Berlanti, is trying to uh, create and executive produce a Supergirl TV series. Now, we've seen this one time. Uh, Helen Slater, I think, was the woman who portrayed the role. Well, well that, was, that was the movie version. We did see a TV version with Laura Vandervoort on the great show that was Smallville. Yeah, but that wasn't a series necessarily about her, was it? Yeah, well, Smallville Season 7 was mostly about Supergirl, so yeah, it kind of was. Hmm, okay, so we've had Helen Slater player, we've had Laura Vandervoort player. One would assume that neither one would be coming back again. I doubt it. Yeah, Vandervoort's got that terrible werewolf show, right? Uh, it's called know. Bitten. I've watched it. I, I'm so sick and tired of werewolves versus vampires. Kill me now. I'm so sick of it, Laura. We need you. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> no, Ryan, I'm not sure how you feel about the show, bud. Yeah, really. <laughs> Don't hold back, man. And the only other thing that I can tell, I, I can think of two other things right offhand that Helen Slater did. One was back in the 1980s. She co-starred with Michael J. Fox in The Secret of My Success, which was, eh. Legend of Billie Jean? I didn't realize she had done that. I knew that she appeared she on was one Billie episode Jean of... with the short... I knew hand. she appeared on one episode of Law & Order. The original oh, yeah. one. She was on uh, SVU, and then she appeared on what was it, Smallville, a couple of times, and did then she? she did. Uh, oh God! Oh, she was on an episode of Seinfeld. Well, heck, if she, uh, they had to play on that Smallville thing when she played Supergirl, then right? Well, no, she played uh, Clark, or uh, not Clark, Kal El's uh, mother, Lara. Ah, oh, darn! I was hoping they had played off of the fact that she had portrayed Supergirl at one point in time. Hey, maybe this could be a chance for her. Just saying, you know, we can get a whole bunch of people doing these surprise little cameos. William Cat and Helen Slater. Who else could we get? Well, Johnny Ship is playing The Flash, his father, in the upcoming CW series, The Flash. See? Why not get Helen Slater to play, you know, Supergirls? Come on, it's perfect. And Dean Kane could play her Kryptonian father. Hey, you know I like it. <laughs> See, now we got a plan going. Uh, Jacob, we don't get to talk PBS a whole lot here on the show. We're going to take the opportunity, in this case, dealing with the popular show, Downton Abbey. What's the latest news from the Abbey? Uh, yeah, if you are a Downton Abbey fan, you can watch it on January 4th, 2005 uh, for PBS. If you are one of our British listeners, uh, you can catch it on September 21st at 9 p.m. So there you go. You have another season. One would assume they're going to keep going. I mean, this thing has become this worldwide sensation. I don't know as they're going to be willing to stop it anytime soon, are they? Oh, yeah, I doubt that goes anywhere anytime soon. There you go. Sci-Fi had put Will Wheaton into show of his own, and I saw a couple of episodes of it. It was kind of funny. Uh, and, of course, he shows up as himself from uh, time to time in The Big Bang Theory. But the Sci-Fi show was called The Will Wheaton Project. Jeff, it appears had is the key word there. That is correct, Steve. Well, why? Sci-Fi has canned it. Why? Um, I don't low know. low ratings? Say. I mean, yeah. sure, low ratings. It wasn't good, I guess. People weren't watching it. Like I said, I watched a few episodes of it, but I think it's probably telling. I watched a couple of episodes in bits and pieces. I never stuck with it throughout the entire episode. Chances but, are uh, I'm not the only Wheaton one. Wheaton just needs to go away for a while. Well, here's what Wheaton said. He said he also he urged fans of the show uh, and, other, and others who have a penchant for letter writing campaigns and stuff to try to save shows we like. Yeah. So please not do so. He said, that's not going to happen. Oh, he's happy to let it go. And we should instead put that energy into something else like getting hashtag butts to trend. <laughs> So I like this guy. So he's got a sense of humor, and there's no doubt about it. And I know he'll show up from time to time this season, probably, I don't know, three, maybe four times on the Big Bang Theory. It's about what he averages on a season anyway, so it wouldn't be all that surprising if he does that again. Staying with cable here, and I don't know how many sports channels we have to choose from, Jacob, but it's not stopping Nickelodeon. They want to get into the, well, sports game, so to speak. Pardon the really, really bad pun. They want to do sports How? Yeah, it looks like pro, the pro sports leagues are, are really trying to get uh, get their hooks into to viewers even younger. And so uh, they're going to be doing, uh, basically Nickelodeon is going to be doing uh, a block of, of shows on uh, Nicktoons, their okay. channel Nicktoons, mm -hmm. uh, that will kind of be a rotating thing of documentaries from things like the NFL, uh, Major League Soccer, NASCAR. Uh, and others, uh, and then, you know, other documentaries from, from those uh, sports and also uh, theatrical movies that are sports-related. So Okay, so uh, this isn't actual sports programming. They're not going out trying to get the rights to air games. They're just working no. with these leagues to try and expose younger audiences to them. Right. Like, for instance, one of the, the NFL ha is going to contribute a show called NFL Rush, which is going to be a half-hour magazine format that basically has highlights, bloopers, and trivia, and 
uh, kind of off the field, in, you know, moments. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be like actual games, but it's going to be uh, basically just, hey, you know, football is cool. Come watch hmm. football when you get older. I, hmm. I see where they're going with it. I'm wondering if it's going to be a success. I, I, I can't. I see where where it benefits the uh, the pro sports leagues. I don't see where it really benefits Nickelodeon. That yeah, I, I'm thinking there's a tune out factor there for kids who are accept, expecting to tune in and get some cartoon of some sort, and then all of a sudden they get this documentary about the NFL or NASCAR, and they're going, "I didn't want to watch that. I wanted to watch cartoon." Yeah, they want to watch cartoons, not Mean Joe Green. Yeah. So okay, I don't really think that that's going to have a whole lot to uh, go with, uh, Jeff. I love this show. Yes. Patrick Warburton portraying the tick. And there's a chance he could come back and do it again? Yeah, apparently it's just right now. I haven't seen anyone actually confirm this. It is definitely in the hot rumor stage right now. But yeah. apparently, um, words come down that uh, Warburton um, and the creator, Ben Ed- Edlund, are working to get the tick on at Netflix, I do believe. No, I'm sorry. Amazon. Ooh. Um, according to People Magazine, Warburton, War. Uh, yeah. Patrick, the big guy. Putty. <laughs> Recently <laughs> inked a deal with Amazon and Sony to reprise the role with Edland producing and writing. So that's um, that's interesting. So, cause... I mean, we're right there. We're just, we're so close. Right. I mean, the tip, when you think about it, it was a little bit ahead of its time. It was a, it really a was. TV show making fun of superheroes before the big superhero blow up. Yeah. I, you want to talk about the right time to bring that show back. This is it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It was a great show. It had great guest stars on there. I mean, Ron and Perlman. An, when you look at the the animated show was so good and it was like it was perfect for a live action. Oh yeah, it almost screamed out to be a live action. That's right. Just Was he the voiceover on the animated series Patrick Warburton or was that somebody else? Oh, uh, that was somebody else I do believe. Yeah. Okay, cuz I did watch the animated series on Fox Kids when I was a kid in the great decade known as the 90s. I wasn't a big big fan of the tick, so Live action? I don't know. But, you know, with David Putty at the helm, a.k.a. Patrick Warburton, I may check it out. Oh, yeah. I'm in. I'm all for this. I hope it happens. If well, not, I mean, I think they should pitch a uh, David Putty miniseries on NBC. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that could also be funny. Uh, one more news note here, Jacob, and um, kind of being off a of TV here, Yahoo uh, signed on to air that sixth season of the erstwhile NBC show Commun- Community, which we talked about earlier playing the theme song. Uh, apparently, a rather noted pair of people will be directing the season premiere. Uh, yeah, um, looks like uh, the Russo brothers from Captain America: Winter Soldier, or, and but I think both of the Captain America movies are going to be uh, directing the first the first episode. So, have they said be. any plans about what they want to try to do? No, they've said that there's there's possibly going to be some kind of re repiloting little little rebranding of the show oh okay so they're almost looking to reintroduce everybody to them then yeah and which is about the fifth time they've done this at this point sure but that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world though no no so all I, right it should be interesting time here yeah. running out on us real quick so jacob if you can hang on for like a minute we'll give you the standings and we'll be ready to wrap up this okay. kind of disjointed show that we've had <laughs> that day all over the building so spanning the hallway exactly so jeff and jacob and ryan thank you very much for your patience as we've gone through all the weird machinations that we've had jeff you are still hanging on to a very sizable lead sir 852.9 million dollars and noting that all five of your films not only all broke $100 million, but they're all still out there making money. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Jacob, though, jumps up to second place, uh, of course, largely on the strength of one Guardians of the Galaxy at $283 million. You're at $771 million. That's uh, not quite $30 million more than Josh, who sits in third place. Josh has one of his films that has gone out of theaters, $743 million. Looks like, judging from what he's got, there's nothing out there that's going to challenge you. So it's looking like, Jeff, you probably, unless Guardians of the Galaxy just stays just longer stays than what we think, uh, you're probably going to be the winner. Second place, looking like, Jacob, I'm in third place, $649 million. I am no threat to jump back up into the top three because three of my five films are now out of the theaters. The only thing I'm left with are Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and The Purge, Anarchy. I don't see any of them jumping back up into the top ten anytime soon. And that brings us to the battle for last. Ryan, you're currently there. 
David's got you beat 376.3 million to 353.1 million dollars. Ryan, you need a heck of a lot more than 12 million dollars out of Sin City. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to happen. Sin City came in for a cup of coffee and left. Yeah, it appears that it has, but we'll keep an eye on it until all the movies are out of the theaters, and then we'll give you the final rundown. Did we have fun doing it? Is something we want to try and do again next summer? Uh, definitely, definitely next do. summer. Heck, let's do it this fall. I want a rematch because this whole thing was rigged. We I could defend do. my crown. We could do it in the fall. I like the idea. Ryan, real quick, where can we find you online, sir? On Facebook at Ryan Matthews and on Twitter at Ryan RPM Five. We'll do it again next week, Ryan. We thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you very much for sticking with us through all the thick and the thin. No problem. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again next week, Jeff. I appreciate it very much, sir, and enjoy you your weekend. We thank you for listening to the Entertainment Roundtable.